as Ron yeah. Carter. I think she said, oh, that's she said, I can't, Missy. She said, I cannot find anybody to work at the daycare, so I cannot provide full yes. capacity. So she's short of capacity. We have a plan for Missy, yeah. yeah. She, she, yeah, there's a lot of things we can do in Missy's case to help out. She's um, so but the main one is that like, she wants to hire two full time people. Um, and she was like, yeah, like, well, I was offering to pay $13 an hour. Oh, okay. Save it yeah. for the juicy board meeting and talk about that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I'll just take it away. All right. We're recording. Um, and I hereby call this meeting to order this economic development advisory board meeting. Um, I'm sorry I cannot be with you all today. Um, I have been at a conference in Colorado and um, it just wrapped up and so I'm calling you from a conference room or a, a hotel room excuse me um, so Ben is going to be running kind of the, the behind the scenes and I uh, will hopefully be guiding us through our agenda um, so uh, with that I actually can't really see everybody um, if I can just make sure everybody can just like raise their hands say they are that'll help us for meeting minutes um, and also make me make sure I know everybody who's here. Everybody knows me. I'm August, Grand County Economic Development Director. Um, let's do online first. Um, Carly, I'm going to pass it to you. Hey, Carly Castle, City Manager, City of Moab. Kelly? Kelly Thorne, I'm with the Department of Workforce Services. All right, um, physical um, people in the room. Rob Walker, board member. Uh, oh. Elisa Martin, Grand County Planning and Zoning Director. Woo. Jasmine Duncan, uh, Town of Castle Valley Mayor. An Alter Economic Development Specialist, Grand County. Emily Campbell, representing the Grand County Planning Commission. There's me, Rachel. <laughs> I think it is. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Uh, welcome to the Economic Development Advisory Board, um, Emily. Uh, I hope that some of this is familiar as we are doing some of the stuff that we've been talking a lot about on the Diversification Council that no longer exists. Um, so I'm just going to go through. Oh, and then we got Melissa logging in online. Um, great. Um, so is there, are there any conflicts of interest disclosures, ex parte communication? Um, yeah, I just always say that I'm the chairman of the board of Moab Community Child Care, um, and I have, have not and will not receive any compensation from the organization. Awesome. Are there any citizens to be heard? Uh, seeing none, I'd like to ask Ben to scroll down on the agenda. We did introductions. Um, I don't think we have any ad hoc presentations. Um, so let's go right into it. Uh, Rachel identified these meeting minutes as something that we missed. So we want to make sure that we get these approved. So um, I would entertain a motion to approve um, the December 1st, 2021 Economic Diversification Advisory Council meeting minutes, the November 18th, 2021 Economic Development Advisory Board meeting minutes, and the December 14th, 2021 Economic Development. I so move. Uh, um, I'll second. There a second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Did anybody look at these and have any questions about the meeting minutes? I have a quick question. I wasn't in attendance for one of the meetings, so I don't want to vote on the minutes. Can we maybe break them out? Sure. Uh, in that motion? Yeah, yeah I, I, I'd entertain an amended motion in that case. Okay, I'll make an amended motion to consider them. Um, I can do the first two, the ones where I was attended in, in attendance. How about that? Sure. Okay, so um, the motion wanna... on the floor is approval of the December 1st EDAP yes. meeting minutes and the November 18th EDAP meeting minutes. Correct. Can I get a second on the amended motion? Second. second Emily. Uh, Emily. Great. Any discussion? All right. I would entertain a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Let's go. 
Um, hey, August, real quick. Yeah. If you have a microphone, do you think you could get just a little bit closer to it? You're just a little quiet. How's this? That is yeah, a, a large improvement. <clears throat> Uh, all right um I'll, I'll make sure to bring my like gaming headset with uh you know the mouthpiece next time not that i actually have that but um <laughs> <Get along. laughs> uh okay so, the december 14th economic development advisory board meeting minutes i'll second any discussion hearing none i'd entertain a vote all in favor aye, aye. all right Approved unanimously. Except for me, I abstain. Except for, uh, well, all, all voting. Yes, correct. One abstaining yeah. on that meeting mode. You're Thank okay, you, Rachel. Apparently. One abstention. <laughs> um, I'd like to then move to the next, which is. Page for that, um, et cetera. So, Ben, I don't know if you can pull up. Uh, yes, um, August, uh, you're every now and then going in and out. Maybe we could try doing no video on your end for a little bit. Sure. You don't, yeah. don't want to see my my hotel room? That's no, we, we, miss, <laughs> we miss your beautiful mug. Yeah. Um, yeah, I uh, was totally going to put together a nice document Sorry. and then I forgot. So I'm just going to pull up the email that I sent to everyone. I mean, while Ben is pulling this up, it's basically we're looking at um, the, the the Wednesday preceding or following the fourth Tuesday. So it would be the day after the second city council meeting of the month um, from 3 to 5 p.m. And that just allows us to space out our schedule so that we have county commission meetings first and third, yeah, travel council second, and economic development fourth. Does it let us rest? No, but that we're, we're tireless <laughs> public servants, so we do not. Um, uh, we're not fearful of such things. Okay, yeah. So take a look. Ben pulled up um, the schedule. Um, the only I think amendment is. Uh, the December date, obviously, um, is very close to Christmas, so I think we'd probably move that earlier on, or we would just bail on that month if, if we don't feel like we need to have that meeting. So uh, we don't have to have any formal approval of this, but mainly this is an opportunity to make sure that there's no major scheduling conflicts, get this on people's schedules, um, and we'll send out placeholder calendar invites um, by the end of the week. Um, August, just a heads up, November 23rd, thank you, is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Uh, it is, yeah. It's late this year. So we may want to move that to, um, I'm looking at the school district schedule right now, and the Wednesday before that, the 16th, there is a regular school day, uh, and then the vacation starts on the 17th the next day. So that Wednesday, the 16th, could be a, a good option. Okay, let's just do that. No, no need to over overthink that. Ben, can you make a note of that for as a change? Is that a third Wednesday? That is one two the third Wednesday. Yes. I can probably do remote that time. Um, and then maybe we should make just the same decision for the December um, date. What would be a, an alternative? So the second Wednesday is the 14th, and then the following two Wednesdays are over school break, and I don't know about anyone else. I have kids, and we'll probably be traveling. Okay. Let's plan on the 14th, then. Okay. I'm going to consider that adopted as our meeting schedule for the rest of the year. I don't think we have to formally vote on that. Okay, um, sorry, I was just putting that on my calendar, 16th of November, and then we said the 14th of December. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you, everyone. I think August, is this, this is our regular meeting schedule, is that correct, basically? Yep. We, we might have, have to adopt it for a state code. We usually have to do it at the beginning of each year, but since we're new, kind of. Fair enough. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll have to look at what's in the bylaws. I think it just requires us to meet monthly. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, well. I think that's true. It's as a public, we're a public uh, body, and so we have to do it according to OMA. Yeah. Okay, well, in that case, um, I would entertain a motion to approve a meeting schedule for the remainder of 2022 for meetings to fall on uh, July 26th. 7th, August 24th, September 28th, October 26th, November 16th, and December 14th. So moved. Uh, a second. Second. And um, could I hear all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, so that passes unanimously. Uh, by all voting. Yeah, so I <laughs> you could vote ceremoniously, but I think the only voting members are Rob, Rob and <laughs> Kelly. Robert's rule and says ex officio members can vote. They can't hold positions of um, board levels, so they couldn't be the chair. Um, and ex officio members can't start the meeting. There's a couple other nuances. except our bylaws say we're not voting. Bylaws. Oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, not voting. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's not ex officio. It's not voting. Yeah, we it's made a, that. It's, it's a combo. You're a combo ex officio and non voting. Am I ex officio too? You are. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not know that. <laughs> that had changed. I'll stop making motions and voting. That's okay. Yeah. So we have Kelly, Rob. Um, that puts a lot of pressure on you too. Oh, you have to do all the motions. Do we, yes, have, a we do have a quorum? We do have a quorum because I believe the quorum is just half of the body. That... You have to have a majority of active membership for a quorum. Um, <laughs> so we don't have a, a like a voting quorum. Is there? Uh, what's the justification for not having ex officio vote on? More public. Good, good, uh, good question. I think is what they said at the one meeting. Okay. Question. Yeah, it was something like to have more influence, like as the yeah, ex officio members already are like making policy or work for the city or the county or right. planning commission. Less government involved in decision making and more public okay. input decision making. Yep. All right. Kelly is kind of the exception to that rule because the state code specifically asks for a workforce development um, representative to be a part of advising on the rural county grant stuff. And so um, she gets a vote. I mean, ultimately, right, we are, our votes are not, we're not like a binding, like, like there's not, we're an advisor. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I think it's, I like the idea of taking votes of everybody, you don't have yeah. to, you could, you could have them be separate, but just says, are why you wouldn't you want to know what the ex official members have, thought? Yeah. That's going to confuse everybody. <laughs> well, if that's something we want to discuss, we'd have to, I think, maybe bring that up at another meeting and look at the bylaws, then we can certainly continue to amend them. I, I don't mind at all. Maybe like Rachel could just put it in the minutes like as an extra thing. Look at Rachel putting her head on the desk right now. I mean, Never mind. Whatever. We're fine. It's, it's cool. Okay. Okay. Well, meeting schedule set. That's great. So we'll, we'll make sure that's on everybody's calendars um, and try to avoid some of the uh, last minute scheduling um, that we've been doing um, here. So next, uh, we wanted to just make sure that we had a interview date kind of locked in um, next week um, sometime so that we were we would be able to um, recruit some potential new board members per our conversation last week. Um, as a follow-up, there was a much discussion around trying to increase or at least attempting to recruit um, some folks who we don't currently represent all that well. So you know, long-term residents of the community who, um, you know, plan to continue um, being a part of the community in the long run as well, uh, folks of color and workforce um, kind of employees. Um, and so we've gotten one additional application um, that Jasmine recruited for us. Thank you, Jasmine. She also asked for us to create some kind of shareable document, social media post, email, or something like that, so that it would be easier for you all to reach out to people who you might know. So Ben and I and Melissa will work on that and have that to you by the end of the week. Um, but for today, um, I think we sent out a doodle poll. Rachel, did we get much traction on that doodle poll from the board, or should we just? I think Rob uh, responded. Nice. All right, thanks, Rob. See all of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh right i'm on vacation sorry that's okay. okay so what 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 would be the best i'm looking i think for me 
Thursday afternoon. Um, maybe, well, I guess we have that RFP touch base thing. Well, we could always just cancel and mail uh, or reschedule. Um, yeah. Uh, there's definitely, yeah, good availability for us Thursday afternoon, um, as well as Wednesday afternoon. Um, although, are, are you going to this or no? Likely, yes, absolutely. Okay, so I think Wednesday morning um, or Thursday afternoon uh, could be good. I know Tuesday is right when everyone's getting back, so probably I'd not. I'd like to do Thursday afternoon if possible, just because that Wednesday event on Wednesday is going to be a big thing. Do folks here have availability Thursday afternoon? We can move this. You, you all can ignore this. Basically, we're free all of One Thursday afternoon. Seven. I'm available after two on okay. Thursday afternoon. Well, you can do it. I'm unavailable. That's okay. <clears throat> Elisa, available. Rob, no. Okay, we got three. Okay, well, we'll reach out to the rest of the voting membership, but let's schedule two to five for now just to hold on to that block. I don't think it'll take that long, um, and we'll schedule per availability, but let's put a placeholder on that time and invite the board. Okay, cool. And then uh, I think the implicit um, uh, ask there is that once we do get something that's shareable, um, that everybody does think of folks and reach out to folks and we'll send an email blast out as well um, to try to try to get some, some new recruits. Great. So we need three, right? Yep, Still? there's three available. Um, we have one um, applicant who we've already interviewed Brian Hummings from Redcliffe, and then we've gotten one additional application. Um, and so if we got one more and that was it, then it would be a pretty straightforward process. But if we get a couple more applications, you know, that makes the job harder for us, but probably gives us better options to choose from and um, gets more people engaged. So I think that's a good thing. And what are the groups that you're trying to focus on? You mentioned people of color, long-term residents. What is the current makeup on the board with regards to um, representing travel industry versus other industries and is that something you're actively focused on i think good question workforce yeah, i think the last yeah. one was the workforce. you know someone who's not kind of in a managerial capacity but is um kind of more living that day-to-day -day in my okay. lab um and um obviously there's difficulties there because you know there's a reason that people who you know are in that group often are not able to participate because they're busy working so you know i think it's i think it's we're trying our best to figure out you know we can reach out and see if there's a good 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 folks in that in that um, in those categories yeah Great. cool i'd be happy to move on unless there's any questions on that kind of topic and i should say that the goal is to have um after those interviews, we'll deliberate, recommend some appointments, um, get that to the county commission and approve before the July board meeting. With that in mind, um, let's, uh, the next agenda item I mentioned already that we're gonna send out some information that we can send out for recruitment. Uh, let's, I, I sent out this, um, I'm moving to the review of economic development strategic plan RFP item. Um, as a quick context brief um, and reminder, uh, at, the, at the last full board meeting, we met and had Noah Cornblue from uh, the World Community Assistance Corporation. We did a, a, a the the name of the thing where you have strengths and weaknesses. SWAT, we did a SWAT exercise and um, went over some high level questions of kind of what we want to see out of an RFP. And then she stayed and worked with us for a day and some follow up work to um, help craft kind of a scope of work. And we're pretty close to being done with that. Um, it's not totally finalized yet, but I think it's it, this is the time to get input and feedback from board members. Um, so I hope. You know, I think we sent this out on Monday. I'm not sure if that's really enough time to give people to have a good look at this, but be happy to scroll through it. Um, if there's any thoughts in general, uh, Ben, if you wouldn't mind bringing that up 
for us to kind of collectively review. Uh, but I'd open the floor to discussion to anyone who has some initial thoughts and feedback. Mm -hmm. Happy to scroll wherever people like. If you have specific questions, you want to jump around, just go for it. So Kelly. this this might be nitpicky, but the if I'm correct, the county population is around ten thousand. Moab city population is a little less. It might be good to make those distinctions. Nope, very good. Be cash. Ben, can you make comments in this document, or you're kind of in a Maybe you need to pull this up as a word instead of a drive thumbnail. But oh yeah, I'll just, the, I'll just do that. Comments still work, but we had, yeah, there we go. Yep, can do that. So um, having had experience specifically working on industry cluster analyses, I would say that can be delivered in a variety of scopes. And we may want to be specific in terms of what specific information we are hoping to draw out of it um, in order to make sure we get what we need and not just a competitive sort of uh, overview. So that can include identifying um, predominant economies of scale, opportunities to um, build upon clusters that demonstrate capacity for growth in wages or jobs specifically or even aligned to the skills and existing youth, uh, workforce so i would just i would be very specific about what should be included in that analysis i agree the last time we did an industry analysis it was kind of a cluster <laughs> it was not it wasn't the best product in my personal opinion so I think being really specific about and clear about what we're looking for is a really good idea. Was that the ASAP study? Yes. Yeah, okay. Is this, yeah, is I would agree. I don't think that's really what we're looking for. Grant for this or is this your actual project? No, this is um, this does not have to do with the rural county grant. This is an RFP for our office to create a strategic plan. And since the Development Advisory Board and Diversification Advisory Council have now been brought together in this body. This is something that we would discuss within this group. So not related to the grant, but just our office. Well, and, and I think at, at large, this is coming out of the ask of, we have this new diversification carve out of TRT. How are we actually gonna plan and execute and um, spend that money and develop programs? And so that highlighted section there, um, there's a focus on demonstrating impact um, with the target for that 2026 legislative session um, in which we would need to get a repeal of the sunset of that TRT tax law if we wanted to continue uh, the diversification funding line. Three copies you can so share with someone. My mandate has been trying to I'll deliver that. good okay. metrics for that session. And just briefly, uh, this is something that August, you and Ben want to go forward with. You want to have one of these big fancy documents that says stuff that we might already know. Well, I, I should be very clear that, um, I mean, maybe, maybe like the, the, the idea of a plan as a document that sits on a shelf is not what we're looking for. Um, the goal is to have something very actionable and maybe it'd be useful for us to just go over That's this kind of briefly and then maybe have some questions. Because um, I don't know if we gave ample time for review, but Carly, you had, you'd put your hand up if you want to. Yeah, I can wait till after you. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll answer my question. I just didn't know. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I should probably long. clarify. Um, I didn't mean that to be as uh, aggressive as it came out across there. Enough. Just meant that this is something that your department, like not this group, has decided we need. This so so question. this is actually in the bylaws. So this is, is it a, because of a legal reason, or is it like? Yeah, because like the idea of having an outsider come in and like assess stuff, I, I to me it seems like, well, are like we are we supposed to do know. that? Are right. we kind of assessing things? Oh, but if but if it's something that's going to help you guys, because you guys you know maybe are shorter staffed and it's you know a way to outsource some work you're going to do anyways, then yeah. I'm in support of that. Well, I'm I'm wondering if you in your new directorial role want to give a soapbox of why you think our department needs a strategic plan, how it fits into everything that you're doing. Sure, sure. Would that help context yeah. here? 
So, so the way we think about a strategic plan is like an implementation. I always, I think of it more of an implementation strategy for what we've identified in the general plan for economic development for the county, and the this would be the the master plan implementation plan for all those goals and objectives that are listed in the general plan. So, so you will essentially give a person a lot of direction to say, this is what we want to do, maybe take another pair of eyes on it and then make a plan for us to how we should I think we would definitely it. be advisory and like collaborative in the process, but um, yeah. yeah, I think that this is, this is a good, I think it's a good start to what we're looking for, an um, implementation strategy. It's basically like the way I think of it is like every chapter in the general plan has um, you know, policies, kind of like lofty ideas and policies and objectives, but not the individual strategies of doing those, getting those accomplished. And so that's what this would be. Oh, okay. Because yeah. So yeah, the idea of someone the from the action. outside who is going to like, it sounds like obviously a vision and a grand plan is super important, but it seemed like, you know, you guys should, would be in position to do that well. Right. And that's the general plan. And so that's our, our, role in planning and zoning is to create that general plan that kind of sets out the vision and interprets what the community wants for all of these things and specifically economic development related um, ideas and policies and then yeah this would be the action strategy for those for implementing does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and does it does it say what the i'm, I'm sure I should just let you guys continue on. I'll, I'll read a little bit. I haven't looked at this closely. So we talked about it the last time, but. Yeah. And I think it's really, it's really up to economic development staff to determine what their strategies will be, but align that to the general plan, like policies yeah. and objectives. Yeah. yeah. So we should all be on the same page as far as that. And if the general plan is, is that section for economic development is not what we think needs to happen. And that could always be revised and updated too. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think I um so I drafted this and then August and Nella with our CAC have done some really good editing, but we're definitely painting with broad strokes right now. So I think that we could probably probably spend a little bit more time making sure it's aligned with the general plan section. Mm -hmm. Um but in general, it's a long document. So we definitely want folks to take the time they need to review it and let yeah. us know what we think. Because we, as uh, you raise a great point that we are, since we're outsourcing this work, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, I think that's kind of a, a benefit to have someone from the outside look in for a period of time and do this sort of analysis. But at the same time, we want to make sure we give them very exact directions what we want them to look at. Because uh, it's a it's a big lift and a big spend and we want to be relevant for uh, at least a few years. Um, did Carly, Carly, did you still have, a, do you have a new question? And then I think Kelly has a question. It, it's more of a, oh, a comment. Are we ready for comments and discussion? I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of it. I think uh, I will say that it, given the conversation so far, I might just go through this top to bottom. Yeah. Um, and then we can get into the actual meat of it. I'd, I'd be happy to talk more about context before we do that. Perhaps. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I don't, I, I'm more like the, I have discussion points. That's, that's all. So I can wait. Kelly, what can, uh, what would your comment? So really it's more, it's just kind of pertains to um, the idea of whether professionals should be involved or not. And just reflecting back to it, the ASAP process, a lot what I, the vision for that was really great i think the execution failed a little bit in that um there was a lot of input from people who weren't super familiar with the concepts and the you know sort of the economics of things and so i think we ended up with some goals that were a little off of reality perhaps Sorry, I'm not okay. feeling very articulate today. Anyway, I think that just goes to the idea that having professor, professionals involved in the process along with community members kind of at each step is is valuable in my opinion. Yeah, 
no, I, I appreciate that. And then the last thing I'll say before we go through this is that for me, um, the goal is to have basically a roadmap for the next three years in which we're, we're what's in here is kind of the things that we want support on to help flesh out. Um, and then, so then we have kind of a clear roadmap, a three-year strategic plan that we as an office can then implement. Um, and uh, that will be kind of our guiding, guiding document for this body, for our office for the next three years. And, you know, that's pretty typical in kind of municipal local government um, strategy work. Uh, I guess we ben, need to lean into your you gaming headset again. Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, ben, can you scroll up to the top? Like, sure <laughs> can. <laughs> yeah. and then, I'm, and then I'm just, I think you've mentioned this last time, the person that, we, that came and did the SWOT analysis with us. Mm -hmm. The idea would be that this wouldn't be a person who would just kind of go back to their office and do something. They would be like coming in frequently, like working with you guys. So they'd be essentially, essentially like I, a temporary. I should employee. clarify on so, your department that Rob, that Noah is grant funded through her organization to help with small local governments in rural areas. And her specialty is economic development. And her role in this context was to help us develop this RFP we're about to review, but not to actually do the work. Um, so she was helping us do scope of work. Um, she was in our office and we basically just like word vomited everything that we're trying to take on and think about in context. And she helped us um, form this document out of that basically. So she's not going to be involved. She won't be bidding on this RFP. Um, she's helping our office develop this RFP. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just maybe, uh, well, I, what, I feel like I'm talking out of turn. So you, you let me know when you want comments or whatever. Okay. Can I ask one last go the, question? Yeah, this? yeah go for um, it. So at the top of um, the summary of requests, we refer to this as an economic development strategic plan instead of a master plan. But then we tie yeah. it into the chapter 11 section of the general plan and allude to a horizon that aligns to the master planning elements of the general plan process. Is this separate from the master plan or are we reframing the master plan as a strategic plan? I just want to make sure I understand Anything else this would um, tie into? Or? Yeah. So semantically, we decided to call it a strategic plan rather than a master plan, simply because I think the connotation of a master plan is very building oriented. Um, mm -hmm. And that this is more, this really is strategy, right? This, this um, gives our department a strategy to execute. Um, and the goal is for that to fill that gap in the general plan. Um, it just has a three-year window. So, um, so long as that general plan exists, if this is expires in three years or whatever, we'd go through another process of a similar Great. nature. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, summary of request, you kind of just shared that. Um, there's a focus on that 2026 state legislative session where that sunset is. That language is not final there. Um, you know, so the context that we have, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on the context and I'll let um, you all look at that later because um, I think we kind of would all agree with everything that's in here. Um, ben, can you keep scrolling down? The second paragraph highlights that um, language, the bill language that gave us the economic diversification funding. Um, provides context as to who we are. Ben, if you can keep scrolling. August, um, if there was anything that required discussion for a potential additive here, do you want to do that now or later? I think I want to just go through this really quick and then we have Thank some you. discussion. Yep. So mentions the general plan context and where, what says, what, what, what language is in that general plan for economic development. Uh, and then scope of work. So this is where we kind of really dive into it. So um, part of this, Ben, can you actually show the, the edits? Okay, great. Okay, so some of these, 
let's go through this. So assist the economic, the category is kind of on the sustainable and intentional tourism side of things. So um, this basically has a very tourism focused context. And, and I think that we've, as we've had more conversations on this topic, that is basically an entirely separate strategic plan. Um, and something that we are planning that I'm and the Travel Council Board are excited and I think really need to do. Um, and so that's gonna be a separate RFP just because I think the consultants who are gonna work on an economic development strategic plan are gonna be different than those who work on um, you know, tourism strategic planning. Um, however, I'd like to get them around happening around the same time and speaking to each other. So I'll just, I'm gonna kind of glaze over that section because um, that'll get moved out. Ben, if you can keep scrolling along here. Okay, business retention, expansion, and attraction. I think that's right in our wheelhouse. So um, things that we are asking for kind of support to help us scope out in a strategic plan is, you know, what is what are best practices for business presentation one-on-ones uh, um, and develop kind of a, a better stakeholder engagement um, as we do all of this work. Um, and that's kind of typical that, that business retention, expansion, and attraction um, element there. Uh, this is kind of right in the money B here by barriers, including, but not limited to local government policies, limiting factors imposed or supported by regulatory bodies and current zoning laws affecting commercial development and our business expansion to business creation, growth and expansion for both tourism related and other businesses to develop an actionable strategy list, empowering our department to effectively address and to remove those barriers. And then uh, part C is to undertake a comprehensive review of commercial spaces within Grand County, identify parcels ripe for commercial and or mixed use development and provide our office with a strategy to incentivize and or create opportunities for sustainable diversified operations within those areas. Do you wanna keep going, Ben? Under economic diversification, Are you, is that good? Do you need me to scroll more? Nope, that, yeah, that's good right there. Uh, this first section, I think, I think we actually decided to take um, out, if I'm not, I, I believe we're gonna take that section out. Um, so don't mind that. Um, when it comes to really clarifying what economic diversification means to Grand County, that's something that we're gonna really want to have in that strategic plan. Um, next is identifying Grand County's growing non-tourism industries, advise economic development on how to effectively preserve those operations and existence of businesses within these sectors, and then assess the tourism and non-tourism industry trends and advise and define to our department and the county which industry should be targeted for attraction and or expansion with express concern for the preservation surrounding natural resources, quality of life, um, et cetera. And then there's a workforce development component. Um, develop an understanding of our current workforce shortage. Um, um, I think that's really straightforward. Assess local, state, and regional partnerships, programs, potential models that are already in place. Um, as we mentioned, Utah State University, Grand County CTE, local inter apprenticeships, et cetera. Ben, if you wanna continue on here. Um, exploring um, kind of partnerships with employers on uh, funding local workforce, transportation, housing concerns, um, involving uh, no incentives from the public sector, identifying legal and other barriers to provide creative solutions um, to support transient or unhoused Grand County workers um, as they are a big part of our workforce. Continue on. Uh, quality of life as a uh, subcategory, if you can continue here, Ben. Um, advising our office on how to increase resident access to outdoor recreation opportunities through education, community facing events, create lasting yeah, solutions to Grand County's most. Yep. On that line, um, uh, I think maybe we should specify. I think what we meant by that we meant was, you know, some of the local residents that like are 
you know, kind of like the, the not current, because I mean, I feel like many residents have plenty of access to outdoor recreation opportunities, but there are certain people and groups that like are underrepresented, um, you know, um, and don't have access or don't have like, you know, I don't know, like, uh, or the stewardship you think, yeah, I'm just thinking like, make so, so we have a deliverable that's actually not like, I mean, another thing that the same people that are already using everything are using, like trying to increase the percentage of residents that report that they have gone to a park, I don't know, or something like that, or that's a hike. That's interesting. I don't know if you meant to go here, but what we see is less utilization of our public lands, which are a strong natural amenity because of residents being feeling like they can enjoy them in the same way because of the impact of forest. So there. is there a way to allow yeah. residents to enjoy the natural amenities of the area? It's, it's I think interesting. That's part of it. I also was thinking like of say climbing, rafting, mountain biking, those are all expensive activities that you usually need, you know, like if you're not in, if you don't know someone, it's gonna be hard. So I think versus catering to those people that are already doing those activities, I think is not necessary because we already, we got that covered. Right, there's plenty of people doing it, like, but there's a lot of people who don't. And don't have access. Right. It, like I'm, I'm imagining probably like kids that are, you know, 40% of like the kids in this town, right, are meal, meal assistance, right? Like Low-income households yeah. are probably not. Yeah, access, stuff. yeah, increased exposure, like that be like, you know, what CFI does for other schools. Uh -huh. A third just, issue that's related to that is maintaining access in, the face of development is we've seen development increase we've seen historic trails that weren't adopted into the official trail use plan lose access and i know that's been a point of concern that's a good in point county especially it's good to call on yeah, maybe just incorporate some of those thoughts i like the idea specifically of making sure it's tied to an, a deliverable as opposed to just advise them and i think that what should be included in it yeah it makes sense yeah, it's like we don't need another mountain bike skills park. Like that was cool, but we need to find a way to like increase. I mean, maybe that was good. Maybe that's going to accomplish it. But yeah, higher percentage of participation in those other things too. Cool. Well, I think Ben, I think you captured that that uh, comment. So I'm going to move along. Good point. Thank you. Um. Okay. So here on this next section, we've got. Um, create lasting solution to Grand County's most pressing quality of life concerns, which include but are not limited to congestion on Main Street, noise pollution, and other concerns regarding off-highway vehicles, please scroll down, use and light pollution. Um, August, um, yeah. I know we're reserving discussion. I'm just going to call out that given, this is not a personal opinion, this is an objective opinion, the calling out of um, OHV noise here without addressing the fact that there are people in the community that rely on that for their economic you know, base when we talk about entrepreneurship. I don't want this to get in, um, run a risk of upsetting the legislature and losing its clout because we uh, go too far in the direction of offsetting the real impact without acknowledging the economic power of that user group, I guess is maybe Absolutely. the way of putting it. Yeah, maybe the way to do it is just use that word noise pollution and don't specify in parentheses like what it is, like, you know, ways to manage you know, many, yeah, just saying many of the activities people do in this town, yada, yada. And, and I, I would almost say on that, that like, that, that seems at some level somewhat out of scope for this exercise. Now, now that I'm seeing this as a whole. So I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking of after we go through all of this, I think trying to figure out really what what are we asking for and what is maybe i don't think it's out of scope i think it's a good constraint to give them because if they come back with a cluster analysis that says over the last three years most of the growth has been in you know vehicular tourism and we recommend that be a predominant cluster of development it it'll have no legs in the county with the with the public and so giving that as a constraint but just not letting it be a uh, vulnerability to the effectiveness is is more what I'm suggesting. That's my perspective. Cool. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, Ben, can we go to the next section here? I don't know. I've lost track to P in my pocket. Yeah, I'm, I'm at which uh, TV? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, we could do both. Yeah. <laughs> This is fancy. <laughs> is this the right spot? Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Um, this is basically 
um, keeping a focus on um, kind of public lands and, and negative kind of environmental potential outcomes of development in general and trying to keep that in mind as we're developing these strategies when it comes to quality of life. So that's what I would categorize that. And then um, and D, I think this is really an important one is, you know, making sure that we are not displacing residents through development actively. Um, so this is kind of really the good stuff here. I think one of, one of the main to kind of address Rob, Rob's point earlier is that what I see the value of a consultant is for doing planning work is having a, someone who is a facilitator to help with these community um, engagement conversations um, and kind of help us gather all of the voices that need to be heard as we're making these suggestions so that it's not just the opinion of our office or of the board of this board um, that are that are making a strategic plan um, and I think also you know starting with uh, stakeholder interviews doing the community meeting stuff working with our boards and the county and the chamber of commerce um, and Carly I'll put a a placeholder here for any comments that you might want to add based off of the vision process that you're doing. Um, I know we've talked about trying not to be duplicative, um, but I think also if there's any comments that could feed that, feed this process, um, that would be probably useful. Yeah. Um, and then we've added kind of a diversity, equity, and inclusion component. So, you know, ensuring that all residents will be able to participate in and benefit from sustainable economic growth and ensuring meaningful participation of historically marginalized communities, conduct outreach in Spanish and other languages spoken locally. Um, trying to keep going here. Keep those to his. This is why you're not a bureaucrat. <laughs> what? This is why you're not a bureaucrat. Um, and, then, and then putting together an implementation plan. And so this is really the more important part. Um, but reviewing our current programs that are offered or in development um, and, and basically taking that into account with the strategies that we're talking about to say, okay, we want to have this type of one-on-one -on -one visitation program set up by year three, where we're talking to all of these business people and we have you know, responsibilities set up for having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, develop a strategy to facilitate ongoing community conversation. So whether that's like an email marketing campaign or we have a weekly kind of conversation or I think that the business summit is a good example of how this is, um, we can continue these conversations. And then makes kind of really, you know, that's, that's deep in planning land which has all of the key deliverables and objectives all in place. And, and making clear the funding and resources available and any additional funding that we'd have to go after. Ben, if you want to keep going. And um, I think this is a really good place for discussion here. Um, some of overkill just to make sure that everything potentially asked for is captured and we can, the intention is to refine this list. But, you know, the, basically the expected deliverables, deliverables are the community engagement plan. So we actually go do that community engagement. Um, the tourism strategic plan will be pulled out and will be a separate exercise that this board won't be that really involved in. That'll be more travel council board work. Um, that commercial land use analysis um, this industry cluster analysis, the workforce development partnerships, um, focus, the, yeah, I like Noah's question there, reword question mark, some kind of quality of life plan, um, or strategy there, um, the administrative draft report with the implementation matrix, a public draft report with a, with an implementation matrix, presentations to both, um, of the boards and to the county commission and a final report and implementation matrix. And then these are a bunch of resources that we have that we'd be sharing on request to any 
August under the uh, sustainable and intentional tourism. What? Sorry, Emily, go ahead. Um, under the details of the uh, sustainable and intentional tourism strategic plan yeah. that's going to be uh, creating a set of KPIs. And I don't know that that made its way through to the rest of this scope and would like to see it mm -hmm. called out explicitly. Some KPIs for everything else for the for the kind of economic development piece. Is that what you're saying? Right. And I, I might even um, nest, for example, the quality of life coordination and priorities underneath that and instead frame it as, you know, for example, a list of strategic KPIs that can allow us to baseline and track, uh, you know, quality of life indicators, economic diversity, workforce strength, dot, 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 whatever, however you wanted to frame that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think perhaps, Ben, if you can kind of try to capture that under the uh, implementation plan area and the matrix and, and tying those to KPIs. Well, I don't need what else should I add for us to reference later August uh, and or group? <clears throat> I, I think that's uh, enough of a placeholder that we'll be able to fit that in. Got it. <laughs> August, are you open to other comments at this point going back into the document or do you want to just focus on this list right now? No, I'm happy to. I just want to make sure I can't remember what is in the rest of this document um if it's just the proposal needs. requirements yeah okay. well, maybe let's take a quick look at the proposal requirements um i just want to i think that's probably something that we can internally workshop um unless there's, unless there's specific um thoughts yeah so let's let's maybe focus let's focus on the content um of what we're asking for and um, bless you I'll, I'll, I'll Thank you. about the proposal requirements and then the, unless people have like some really specific good questions about what they want to see in a proposal. Carly, you've got your hand up. Is that an accent or is that on purpose? That's on purpose. I'm ready to discuss. I've been taking Let's discuss. Let's discuss. Okay. Get into it. I've got a bit of a list. I have a couple of questions. Can you remind me of the budget for this scope of work? Uh, we have 65 grand approved. 65. Okay. For like comparison, our um, community visioning is 80. So it's a pretty extensive community engagement. So that's what gets so expensive. We have people flying here and stuff like that. But just so you know, you can get an idea of how much maybe you will be able to pay for um, given that. And to clarify too, is this for Grand County or is it for the Moab Valley? I I mean, I think it would have to be, it's, it's Grand County as a whole. It's Grand County and that's like the terms of the grant. I think that's really interesting because you're going to get maybe really different input or strategies for something like Castle Valley and Thompson Springs versus, you know, here in the Moab Valley, because you know better than I do, they're facing much different economic um, situation. So I'm, I'm curious to see kind of what um, the recommendations look like for those, those other communities that sometimes, you know, living in Moab, I, I can uh, forget about. Um, and I just wonder if you want like different, maybe sections in different deliverables um, for those different places. Maybe the matrix will look different for the Moab Valley than for Thompson, but just something more to talk about with the selected consultant than anything else. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Making yeah. making kind of, you know, obviously the Moab Valley is the main driver of, mm -hmm. of the economic activity and what we're focused on, but I think we want to make sure that we're using this as an opportunity to, to plan with Thompson and to plan with Castle Valley. Mm -hmm. And at the very least have like a community meeting in which we're having some input in those. Yeah. Um, we to, just, just a quick note on that. We are completing a land use study currently that will help to devise a land use vision plan for development across the county. That would be wonderful to tie into this because we would have the recommended nodes of development and 
non-development essentially right represented in that is that my yeah correctly definitely i think they that would be the ideal scenario is to tie the land use study and results which are which really are is going to update the land use element of the general plan should align with the um with this so yeah i mean i think we could work together in terms of thompson and what like the future uh, land use designations being proposed there and how those would align with economic development in Thompson Springs, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, um, sorry, I'm always losing my place here and I can't read my handwriting. I really like what you said, um, August, about uh, the importance of facilitation for this kind of effort, because you're right, you're trying to come to a community consensus, but that often involves some conflict resolution. And, you know, as a recommendation, just firms that are able to provide that facilitation, I've seen it be really successful in, in past processes, and it's a really good instinct. So I'm, I'm glad that you made that comment and are looking for it. Um, I also support this as a, um, as a consultant-driven work, not consultant-driven, rather, identifying a consultant for this work because it's so massive. Um, and it also just provides a third-party look at for, for the community as well as you know for the benefit of August you and your team I, I think it's appropriate for for a contract um the budgets um what from the um scope of work I don't get a good sense of what level of community engagement you are looking for um it, it just a few kind of meetings and presentations I imagine you, you don't just want that but a, a someone responding to this um this bid might not know. Um, so maybe make that a little more robust. Out of curiosity, what, what do you have in mind? Is it the same level as like a general plan or like the community visioning or? I mean, I think that that element is probably the most important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so Ben, if you go to that section that has the community engagement piece. Uh, um, Can you remind me where that is? Uh, if you go up. Thank you. I guess I, I'd, be, I'd be open to, to input. I haven't made that super clear yet. Um, sure. So I think clarifying, I do want to make it really clear, like we expect this many meetings on this type of thing. And maybe I'd ask you how your experience with your consultants were through the visioning process. You know, you had some initial meetings and then you had like specific stakeholder group breakout meetings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we definitely did. I mean, we had the the survey, which is enormously helpful because it was some of the foundational work we were doing. You know, they are building and maintaining the website. I don't know if it's, that's if you want a web presence, social media presence, those kinds of things. You might want to make clear if that is your level of expectation. That's what's happening. Um, and um, you know, I don't know how long you have in mind for this to 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 last. Like, is this a four month process? Is this six month? Um, it, it's great to definitely get feedback from, from proposers because they might have their ideas, but, um, they also might just be asking you like how much, when they're putting their bids together, how much of an investment do you want in community engagement? And that, that component can be expensive. Usually it's one of the most expensive components for things like this. So, um, so, I mean, I would just sort of say like one website, if you want surveys, you know, you want that, if you want like one-on-ones with, um, or like, you know, um, smaller community groups. I think those are all really valuable, but I, I, it's kind of up to you to decide how you want to spend your money. Right. And I think um, we have room in the budget to add some more money to this project. I oh, great. I think this plan is going to be really important. It's, it's well worth it, I think. It's, it's a good investment. Um, and then my, my final kind of comment or, or advice, or maybe it's a request, um, What's difficult for you is this is a strategic plan for your office, um, and it, but it probably includes actions for both unincorporated and incorporated Grand County. Um, so maybe, you know, a presentation to the city council would be appropriate. Um, we can provide materials. There's like a list of materials to be provided. We can provide whatever community visioning information we have. We can provide our own general plan. Um, because, you know, so much of the commercial activity does take place in, in Moab City. So to get the input and buy-in from the council who might be making decisions uh, on some of these things um, might, might be good to clarify. Um, and maybe true for like the town of Castle Valley and Thompson as well. 
Yeah. Well, and I think we, that we I should provide our that that other plans. Sorry, go ahead, Jasmine. I was just saying that, yeah, we could also provide our general plan and yeah. Yeah, I mean, really any reference materials that is that is useful, I'd like to be able to provide. So I'd, I'd invite that for sure. And, yeah, we'd and I be think happy in terms of scope, talking about like an office implementation plan, although that's obviously the most useful thing for me as I'm, as I'm thinking through this stuff, I think that that's in the implementation plan. However, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm not thinking of this exclusively as, you know, just an our office thing, I would hope, um, but also so in general, trying to um, think through kind of the larger economic development opportunities that, you know, maybe we wouldn't be actively supporting or looking at, but also like, well, here's this opportunity on the horizon that maybe the county doesn't want but the private sector is going to be really going after, you know, because it could, you know, I know that like lithium, ex, you know, extraction is something that could be of interest in our area. And so we need to be planning for that either way, whether it's like the goal or not. Um, so I think that I would want to include that as a part of the, the ask. Um, mm -hmm. And then having a clear implementation plan for our office, obviously. But I guess I want to clarify that, that it, I want to have it not, you know, to have some slightly larger scope than just our offices. Right, well, I just, I mean to say that it's like, this is the county, but there are other jurisdictions who have to, yeah, okay. to be on board with what you're you're doing. And and you want to make sure it aligns with, with what they have in mind as well. And for sure, producing the materials will help that, but also ongoing conversations. Um, like I think one of, under the scope of work under the sustainable tourism component, you know, it has, it identifies like the count, meeting with the county and the chamber of commerce. I think it should be with the city council too. Yep. Um, and, and just making sure that that's all incorporated. Um, that will probably, that'll be the hard part. Um, I think down the line because the, the, the county has persuasive authority and a good plan, but you want to make sure that the that yeah, whatever your implementation plan looks like, it's like maybe a strategy for how you partner with the other jurisdictions in the future to to achieve the goals that you identify. Yep, absolutely. And just, to answer that question about the timeline, how long? How long? Like when do we want this to be done, basically? Yeah, Carly's question. About, like, I don't have four months, six months. Clear. Yeah, I I don't have a super clear answer on that. I guess I would think about our constraints in terms of the budget is dedicated for this year. Um, well, Carly, what do you think? Uh, yeah, how and, long the timeline should be for this, and also at least I mean, what do you think based off of this? A timeline for getting this for the consultants for the contract for it, the deliver for the deliverables. For the deliverables. I mean, I'd throw out, you know, completed by the end of the year. And mm. No. <laughs> no, because it's, it's like going to take be... like two months to procure them and get them on board. I, I, I put this at like an eight month process at least. Sure. That's realistic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right. great. Oh, but it's like all our issues in this town, <laughs> like how fast do things change, right? Like what are housing prices going up? Well, like, so it's like, yeah, I, mean, I guess if it's part, we have to go through it. Um, it's not to seem a little bit like, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, slow. It, everything is slow. How often are you updating your well, Why is everything right. slow? Why Every does it have to years? be? I mean, I guess. Well, just, I mean, that. well, you're thinking about things in the long range. You're trying to plan, you know, three to five years out. It's going to take, a, and you're trying to coordinate these, this effort with all these jurisdictions and organizations and, and efforts. Is, but to yeah, take one year to make it through your plan. Like that's gonna, I don't think it would take a whole year. I mean, I think six to eight month. months after you get the actual, after you secure the contract, if, like six months. Yeah, and if we, were, if we weren't engaged in spending in other ways in the community right now, I would totally feel your pain. But I think trying to look at this from the big picture, we are, it's like a, a small chunk of what we're doing. And I think for our office, it'd be important because we get a lot of great input from our boards about what the community needs. And then I talked to one person on the street and they say, that's totally wrong. This is what we need. 
I really wish we had a plan so I could be like, well, I have to do what this paper says for a few years first. Mm -hmm. um, but it, in general, or alternatively, that that paper is informed by that person's comments. Right, and we and we have rural county grant funds that are going to be around for the next few years. Those we have to turn around within the year. So those funds, I think, are much more diverse. Um, not diverse. They're they're much more actionable. Yeah. You've got and your are, budget too. Right. Your tier, the TRT flexibility, like money, it's like a million bucks, right? Yeah. So I guess yeah. As long I guess as long as it's like this isn't going to hold you back on like you're like well we got to wait for the study to come back before we decide to tackle this issue. I, I understand that. I don't think that's our intention, but. I mean, August, you jump in. I, I was just going to say that I think that um, what you're speaking to, Rob, about like, well, context change and now throw the plan out the window. We spent all this time. And mm -hmm. I think that something that's not in here that I'd like to add is um, some kind of in, in the intention for this to be an iterative um, plan that is that is actively reviewed and worked on rather than oh, well, those goals are out of date and I'm not going to look at this plan again. So whatever. Well, I was thinking too, to your point, August, there is just that, I mean, this seems like something that hasn't been done in the past recently in economic development. Maybe, I don't know if there has been a, a strategic plan in recent years before your time, August. And then, you know. There's a draft so, plan. That was never okay, so so this would be laying the groundwork for yeah. one for a strategic plan, which can be updated and won't be as long and arduous and expensive okay. the next time around. Updating it in three years it, time after sure. it kind of that ex, it expires and you update it, you have a basis to yeah. build you know to build yeah. upon as so as I'm someone who from scratch. Yeah, as someone who on this board, I probably I don't know if I'm the only one right now who actually like doesn't have like an officially job like in you know government type thing. I'm just gonna throw something out and and I'm not trying to like hijack anything. Like it can just we can just move on after that. Okay, you can this do is, this. This, this is, is the cool. discussion portion of this agenda item. Perfect. And I encourage it. Okay, so like let's say the budget is sixty five thousand dollars, and what is the goal? It's the goal, you know, maybe the goal is to solve for like what Ben was talking about, which is like you have people on the street who are people wanting to have buy in about what we're doing and um, that they're not feeling like ignored. And that's a big part of that community engagement part, which is a big part of what Carly did with that person they brought in and had all those sessions, which seemed to be like well attended and went pretty well. It seemed like um, from people from hearing from people. Um, it's like, you know, you can go get an MBA or you can spend $150,000 and buy people drinks in New York City bars. And like, you'll probably get a better job that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so like we can just take that money and like buy pizza every single month for a hundred people. You know, I could have like a Moab, you know, and you, you could have one person on your staff who is not you. So that way you don't have to like tell that person to stop talking or something. So you can kind of maintain distance from having to be like the tough guy Facilitate, facilitating these sessions, but it's like an actual document. Personally, I have like no interest in an actual document. So one of the opportunities, noted, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just a throw it. Right. Right. Um, the, the thing that stands out most to me is the first paragraph of this RFP, which is the ability to show the legislature that we can reliably use TRT funds in ways that aren't directed by them. <laughs> I mean, I realize that's not the end all and be all of this, but by going through the diligence of doing this thoroughly and well and giving ourselves a short time frame of three years with actionable goals and indicators, within five years, I hope the county is in a position to go back to the legislature and say, hey, you need to give us more control over how we use these funds because our community is hurting, but we have the opportunity to make it stronger without fundamentally disrupting the economic base of Grand County. That is going to be such a strong tool because they can't argue with that. They can argue with us saying, you know, oh, you down in Grand County, you just don't like, a, you know, UTVs. That's all this is about. So I, I think this is a really, really powerful uh, tool that, yes, also should be combined with things that actually create impacts for people in the real world tomorrow. And I think we have the means yeah. to do that. That's and a great point. I didn't know that. I didn't think about that. That's another outcome we're trying to solve for then, right? right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It also provides like community transparency and accountability. So like people are like, what are you doing, Grand County? It's like, here are the things we all agreed to when during this whole process that we did. And this is what we're checking off the boxes. And like, if you want something different, then tell us to do something different. But but we're doing what you said. And, and that's why the investment and the engagement is so valuable because it's like everyone bought off on this. 
Yeah, I do like the idea though of ongoing engagement as opposed to like, you know, well, we had all these meetings a year ago, we made this plan and that's gonna like last because if things change and also just giving people opportunities to show up because I think I like that idea of having, we could have more of that. I mean, I mean people, people always complain, right? Like it's, it's kind of silly because all the meetings that council and, 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 and uh, commission do are public and they're on YouTube and everything. People say like, well, it's not transparent enough. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, but that's to be an easy way. You, know, you just kind of like- Yeah, but that's a communication people... thing because it's like they, they exist, the raw information exists, but who in their free time is gonna go to like the PMN site who knows about the PMN site and then is going to watch okay. this recording, which is going to be associated with this meeting, right? Like, obviously that's important for transparency and accountability. And so that I can remember what we discussed in six months time when I have to say, yeah, the, 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 this body did actually vote on this, okay. but you're right. It's like, how do we have some kind of like digestible nugget of information? That's like, Hey, we discussed this and this is what's going on. And you want, uh, if you want people, if you want engagement, you want people to show up, give them the reason to show up. And I think that is free food, you know, <laughs> like it's not that hard, you know? <laughs> so I, I like the idea of yeah, accomplishing, um, you know, what Emily said uh, makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's so cool that we have this flexibility with that, with our million dollars, what you guys are doing with that grant program. Um, so like whatever we have to do to make sure that, yeah, that continues and expands, do it for sure. And if that's make a formal document that they're going to want to see, then I'm for that. But I think also too, like, yeah, let's put some money to, let's, yeah, I think, I think it'd be fun. I mean, we had such good success with that, with those childcare round tables, we had two of those. You know, I thought every, no one would show up because uh, they all had their kids and they were busy, but everybody, I mean, a bit of good attendance and um, yeah, a little pizza goes a long way. And um, I think that's also probably makes sense, you know, manage your own um, feedback in the community that what you're doing is like behind closed doors or not. Or even reach out at, at events maybe that people are already going to yeah. with have surveys available or things where yeah. people are already gathering. And I would say your department especially has done a phenomenal job this year at creating more of those opportunities. We've had the transportation master plan, which has been to the city as well. We have yeah. the you know boat ramp, we've had the land use planning. I mean, I'm overwhelmed. It seems like every two weeks there's some it's public meeting I need to make time for, but it's great. It's a survey, there's a public meeting. So I, I think the county has, some, has set the momentum in that direction. And, uh, right, but, 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 but I do want to make a distinction between formal meetings and what I'm discussing. Right. Sure. Like right. I'm thinking like yeah. throw a party. Yeah, no, that's Wait, what I'm saying. Yeah. Too. It's like an open house. People are already it's going to be doing. Try to make it like, Don't make it here. Don't make no, it no, here. No, no, no. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's at the, have it a, yeah. Like <laughs> have a place people like. <laughs> and if you have it regular then people will say like oh you can at least go and like you know and yeah i mean well, i don't I think, know find I think a way to we, broaden between. i think a, a deliverable for you guys or a kpi i would imagine would be like the number of people and the, the number of surveys you're getting the number mm -hmm. of people that went to your info sessions right versus the same 50 people in town who like act oh, yeah. like, like me who act like they're an official they're really not they're just trying to like listen you know right get their well, opinion heard but get get a broader definitely part of this yeah. start tracking that now well yeah and so we are ramping up planning and zoning we'll be ramping up for some town halls that we're calling neighborhood planning meetings to tackle the land use um, descriptions and land future land use map for neighborhood areas so we're going to be going and having these little town halls like in actual neighborhoods that we've identified and I think we could, you know, I don't know how the People timing of those them. will we'll align with houses. economic development yeah. stuff, yeah. but it would be cool if we could coordinate some of those. I just don't know how the timing will line up with all of this, but we haven't set any dates, but you know, the, the future us. land use map and that whole analysis with the consultant is supposed to be kind of wrapping up like at the end of the summer. So, so that's kind of where we're going to be. Cool. It can be as small as a posted card at those events with a QR code to get on a newsletter to get updates about future events and you know, invitations to ongoing surveys. I, I'll I just try to, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I just, I want to separate um, what we could be doing better as a county from what this particular document is framing because I agree yeah. having very explicit expectations around the number of 
um, meetings, the percentage of the community that is had a touch point is going to help them frame their solution back to us and also uh, assess budget. So I think that that's and and you know we should determine um, if that is something that weights their their costs above where we would expect to see it. Are there trade offs in here we'd be willing to drop in order to get to that sort of community involvement? You know, are we willing to drop a um, aspect of this around? Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe the industry cluster analysis doesn't have to be as broad, for example. So it probably that's an internal conversation. Um, but then there's this broader question of how can the county and its various boards create more opportunity for people to feel like public participation is accessible to them? And I would recommend we just table that for now yeah. and come back to it yeah. and focus here. But I think it's a good topic to keep running. Yeah. Uh Any other discussion on kind of what's in here? Obviously, this is not, not ready to be issued. Um, so there's some more work that needs to be done. So this is a really good time for us to say, like, hey, this section, you don't need this, or this section needs working, or let's continue to add some some stuff. So if there's any other discussion or general, general points on this. I had three quick comments. We don't have to spend a lot of time on them. Um, the first was in the background section as we are talking about why and what it is we're trying to get accomplished. Um, we, I mean, this is a great point. Broadly, we do have a natural constraint of, um, uh, there are things that an economic analysis might come back to that aren't palatable to the community's set vision, maybe, is I guess a del delicate way of putting it. How do we make sure that the Solutions that are brought back to us are feasible given um, existing public priorities and whatever. probably I'm with that background. Trying to say, yeah, I mean, they're going to have the they're like, going to have our general plan. They're going to have all of oh, this stuff. To sorry, work with. I'm going even more specific to say we have a very active and you know involved community that has right. very strong opinions about what should and oh, shouldn't right. be involved, and anything in a three year horizon should be feasible given. Um, that's going to be very so tough. Just, that's going to be yeah. tough for a consultant to, to figure because they don't know the pulse and it. Cool. So we somebody's going to have to be just, working with them. Also, right. Right. I just yeah. was going to throw it out there as yeah. a potential thing. It's a good point, yeah. but it's also a good thing to on. have a third party doing this kind yeah. of right. Right. because then yeah. they're not Nobody's. stopping themselves all the time thinking, oh, somebody's not going to like that. Oh, well, I think if I was well, if I was coming at this from like an outsider perspective, I'd be like, oh, you have a worker shortage, like. Oh, let's just like pay a bunch of money and bust people in from junction or whatever or like right. and, know, like, let's, let's, and that would be like yeah. completely unpalatable right it, an example might be and we reference extraction but if this consultant comes back to priorities that say oh ramp up oil and gas development on the land yeah. surround you know it's yeah. it's just going to fall flat and i want to make them successful in this plan we can maybe make a list of sort of things it, like not trees not to bark up i and it was more just does it need to be referenced like at mm -hmm. the higher level but Eventually, I think when they're oh, you mean up front, do we yes. need to just in the background? It was just yeah. as I was reading the background, it seemed like a gap, not okay. not something to, um, I guess, over rotate to right now. Um, another very small thing under uh, quality of life five section E. I think it is worth uh, also acknowledging the real constraints of water and available land. Um, again. I realize once we accept this proposal, we will work closely with them in order to define those parameters, but I would like that constraint. So I have worked in communities with those constraints. I'd love to see that emphasized. Last thing, very small, under section six, do we have any interest in asking them to try and work with neighboring communities, specifically Northern San Juan County, uh, Spanish Valley, um, because their development plans are going to be, have an effect on how we frame our future. Yeah. I'd uh, say yes. I don't know if that how complicated that makes things. Maybe that's. I just want to make sure it wasn't a third rail, but I, I did want to throw it out there for some them, discussion. Relevant. Let them do it. I mean, they'd be like perfect, right? Theoretically, because they're like they're not they're a disinterested party essentially, and right. Those are tough communications, anyways. Yeah. Maybe so. That, I I would just kind of like for the opposite of that, I would say is a suggestion would be like why. Well, uh, it's uh, I completely agree with that. Uh, what I meant to say is. You know, Thompson, when I looked up, has 100 people that live there, 100? Probably about yeah. that. So that's 1% of the county. Um, so that'd be $650 of the $65,000. Um, and then when you're doing analysis on something, what goes from Moab Valley is a completely different place. Yeah. So it should have its own evaluation of things. Mm -hmm. However, how are you going to do that with, with that budget? You know, Castle Valley has 450. Like, that's a, a much bigger, bigger thing. But it's also, like, 
you know, different totally kind of different kind of community yeah. that does a lot of work, which I feel like probably doesn't need a separate big giant economic plan because you know I, I don't know I, maybe it because we have no commercial zoning. Anymore. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I, <laughs> yeah. I was going with that. I feel like those communities are so small, and they're kind of yeah. they could be really summarized in a, but definitely should be left out. Like there should be some it's probably frustrating sub plan. Well, yeah. there are still relevant needs there. Too. Yeah. Like you know, like well, Castle Valley is obviously a pretty retired but, community, and mm -hmm. the needs there are generally for supportive services that we have that we lack in yeah. Grand County. So those are some of the things that I would point out. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I spent in terms of the scope, in terms of time requirements. Oh, yeah, like yeah. to me, it seems like it'd be a lot of time for you know for yeah. stuff we already know. A yeah, lot of it. yeah, or yeah, maybe we could just have the staff add something in there for Thompson so they feel like they're not excluded from the plan, but don't have this outsider have to learn about a tiny town, mm -hmm. you know, separately. It's a whole, yeah, if you want to save money or reduce the scope, that's just unless one you're suggestion. trying to build Thompson up, and that's what they're well, what they're wanting. There is and, Thompson, you know, there are folks in Thompson that, yeah, they're well, went from, they went from that. 45 to 100 the last 10 years, <laughs> so I mean, that's that's a double, that's more than a double, but yeah. Well, but well, also it's like you know that. maybe there's something yeah I, I don't i have no idea i think even just some interviews with the residents like some those would be like stakeholder interviews you know like you could identify i wouldn't want to some pay key. someone to, i wouldn't want to pay this budget for them to go to thompson and talk to them no but that's well i think the process is is the objective interviewing and synthesis process is is so critical to this sort of analysis and they're going to get information that wouldn't naturally come out in some of the other forums that we have available so it could be as simple as a small town hall that yeah. that planning and zoning could help facilitate and like we're talking about to say thompson springs for instance right but yeah. that that only makes sense logically if we did 100 town halls in, in grand county <laughs> otherwise you're over representing them with the time right they wouldn't yeah. Is, yeah. I, I about yeah. incorporating them here here's what i think a, an econ like if i were a proposer i'd be saying so i'm looking at all of grand county not just moab valley are they trying to ask me to come up with like bedroom community solutions to these problems are they are they pointing to thompson and castle valley as a solution to their housing and that might be what they're maybe trying to to wrap their heads around so it's not just about like incorporating them but also like how could they be part of whatever solution or whatever part of the solution to whatever problem has happened to Moab, right? Um, or whatever the economic diversification goals are. So right. That, right. that's how it gets kind of complicated. Totally, and and I absolutely agree with that. Um, and I and I think if you're if you're thinking about that, you, you LaSalle, the town of LaSalle, is a part of our economic unit. The yeah. town of Green River is a part of our economic unit, and so um, in incorporating how the flow of money and people is in our community one way or another to those places I'd love to have. You know, maybe we're not having a town hall in LaSalle necessarily, but we're getting a good idea of maybe how many people are living in LaSalle who work in Moab, for example. Um, yeah, and then yeah, one other thing I wanted to, 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 yeah. One thing I wanted to briefly mention um, uh, that I was gonna add is, um, I'm, I'm blanking on it now, actually. Now that I made my first comment, I forgot my second. So I'll just let this conversation continue until I remember. Well, I like what, how Carly phrased it um, in that kind of using them almost as we're thinking of, of those other bedroom communities, right, as like potential assets for uh, overall, like for some of Moab Valley's problems. They obviously would benefit them, but it's like, okay, we're going to have this big budget. You know, maybe it makes sense to invest in Thompson for something or or Green River, which I, I definitely know some people that live in Green River and like commute in or you know spend half their week, right? Or or LaSalle, certainly. Right. Maybe there's ways as opposed to let's create a whole and let's do the exact same thing for each of those little Oh yeah, things. no, I think it's more you know? of a a comprehensive view of how do how do all of these little regions work together and yeah. support each other in different ways. Yeah. yeah. And at the same time, you don't want to just be planning for a community like Castle Valley or Thompson without speaking to some of the residents that are there, at least getting a little bit of a, an idea of what they envision for their community, um, which I don't think it has to be uh, expensive or, you know, crazy process to reach out. Yeah. Well, I like what you talked about the bedroom people, the, the reaching out with the, these little neighborhood things about zoning, mm -hmm. but I would say you probably have to do that a hundred of those. You know, I mean, just theoretically, right? Because every neighborhood, if you actually want to do it. So I like it, but it's sort of like, I made my point. You got it. Um, and then on that point, 
the conversation about like spending a lot of time in informing context, you know, I have talked to, for example, the, the consultant who did our land use plan um, uh, bill up in Spokane and, you know, he expressed interest in bidding on something like this and working with an economic development agency. Um, and I think that all of that scenario planning that went to the land use plan process is going to be very informative to, to this conversation. Um, and so I just wanted to put that out there that it's not a guarantee that this is going to be a total stranger to our context. Right. And that we're going to have to probably vet applicants and try to get some really good ones who we think are going to do what we want them to do, be good partners. Any other discussion? It is 4.30. There are a couple other things on our agenda. If we don't get to them, um, uh, I do have to have a hard stop at five today. What's the, what's the, what do we do with this uh, RFP? Do we, do we make a motion to approve it or are you gonna make the edits or something? We need to have the motion today. Okay. I mean, sorry, August, go ahead. No, it's just, yeah, this is, this is kind of the first draft. I wanted to bring it to your attention get comments and uh, we'll continue to work on it. Yeah, and you can continue to send us feedback if you come up with more. Problems. Yeah, I think really what would be really useful is if you had some really specific commentary on this, um, take, a, take a minute after this meeting and, and mark up the document. Um, and maybe don't look at the <laughs> all markup because I'm realizing that made it actually harder to look at this thing. So, I think, uh, yeah, I think you should just work with. I think Emily has a lot of experience in this area. I think you know, and, you know, she's got all this. If you want to get more involved, help out with the art with this document, you should go just go for it. Well, Carly too. Yeah, yeah. Carly, way good input. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just meant that because Emily like does the. Yeah, 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 yes. No, yeah, she I, I, I have taken. I, I echo what you said. Yes, I'm loud. Carly also. August and Ben know all their my Just to be clear, I like Emily more than Carly. I'm trying to say here, Murphy makes more. No, I'm kidding. I hope you're kidding. Carly's amazing. I, I, was, I, had, I have been taking notes, so I'm not. I, it's not a requirement for extra follow up, but just that's useful for me. Would you would you resend this around after you have a chance to just integrate the Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's probably Thank a you. good point. And then yeah, so we can have a clarification follow-up for sure. That'd be great. Um, otherwise, is there any like massive misses or gaps? No. Okay. <laughs> We just talked about this for like a little while. So the only thing I'm worried about is the scope against the budget. So okay. Yeah. And I think that's okay. We, we, I think we can, if we need to increase the, the budget, we, I think we'll be able, we'd be able to do that. I mean, we have to go through county commission, but we'd be able to, um, if we're getting bids higher than yeah, scope down. Cool. All right, Ben, okay. you want to move us on to the next uh, agenda item? Okay. Uh, that's me, right? Like that's the child care. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And okay, the next is uh, intended to be a final review of monthly mean child care funding proposal, but um, I don't think it has to be a final review if we don't feel we have any time. So um, but please, basically, make, please make it a final review. Rob wants a final review. So basically, um, next we've been talking about here. this for a while. So whatever hoops you want me to jump through, I shall jump through them today. Great. I just wanted to make clear that the next steps in terms of like making this happen would be turning this into an MOU that our, that, that the county attorney feels good about getting both parties signed on and um, getting the money going. So this is basically the last opportunity, I think, for this body to review this concept, and then we'll take it on from there. I, I think we've looked at this a lot. So I don't know if we need Rob to like represent this, but more like, are we good to go? We can take a kind of a formal vote and approval of this of this of this idea of this concept, um, and the amount of money that we're planning to dedicate to this exercise. Otherwise, um, like unless there's something that we feel needs to be changed, or if you just want to give Rob like a high five, and vote on it. I, I sent an email as well, yeah. right? Which I don't know if everybody got. Yeah. So do you want to like, or did everybody read all that uh, and saw well, the document? I read the whole email, but I was still reading through the, uh, your updated intent. Yeah. Thing. Do you want to like set the clock for like, give me like 
take a time, three minutes, four minutes, and I'll talk. We, and then we I'll just stop. got a note from Kelly and Carly as well that they saw your email. So I guess, yeah, you want to take like two minutes. Oh, so you got the email. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think everyone cool. saw the email. Right? Okay, great. And then the initial pen document they opened up? I opened it and was reading through it when cool. we started the meeting. Awesome. Okay, well, I guess maybe, I don't know, for the point of, uh, I don't know, I, I don't need to say anything at all. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and I can bring up what you sent if you want me to. But again, yeah, I would just say that I wanted to make, make to try to move on it as, as fast as we could because you know, the programs have started. Right. Yeah. So how about this? Um, I would entertain a motion um, to recommend that the county commission consider um, granting $100,000 to Boab Community Child Care um, pending uh, a particular you know, the particular uh, memorandum of understanding to be drafted by economic development staff and the county attorney and Moab Community Child Care, um, period. So moved. Please don't make me repeat that entire thing. That's great. That's, why, that's well. why I uh, threw it out there. Um, so moved. I think you're the only person who can second. I mean, is that really true? Because I feel like, yeah. I mean, that I, it's I, might maybe not appropriate that you second. I'm not getting paid, so I mean, that's like yeah. that's kind of cool. Go for it. I at least, that, yeah. You know, um, but is there any? Okay, I, you can second no all you want. You're not making money off it. You're fine. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Then I second. Um, any discussion? So I think this is. I just want to get that on the table so we can talk about this and then um, we can talk about it. It's a great proposal. It's really exciting. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. yeah it was really important too. And it was super exciting. Really good job. Starting work. Great job. Yeah. It's, it's really exciting. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, in that case, I, I guess I'd entertain a vote. Rob and Kelly are the voting members of the day. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Hey. That's funny. Brad, okay. Brad didn't even show up today. No, he was all, yeah. he was all, all in this the other day. Voted in favor. Three voting members were absent. Okay. Is that enough to carry this? Good question. We, I, I don't know if there's any. Let me double check the. As long as you declare it a quorum, the majority of voting right. members being in favor, it should pass. Exactly. Because the quorum is based have, on all members. We have a quorum based on all members. We've had a quorum. We had 100% vote. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Whatever you say. <laughs> If the parliamentarian, awesome. if the parliamentarian rejects this action, we can do it. We'll that. redo it. Yeah. And, <laughs> the uh, parliamentarian is Chris Baird. I don't think he's ever. Yeah. <laughs> and you say, I mean, this is purely procedural, process, right? right? This yeah. just this it's helps to inform the county commission. By... Right. Yeah. yeah. This, at the For end sure. of the day, this is just telling the county commission that this body thinks this is a good idea. This, this carries no real legal weight. Um, okay. <laughs> this is awesome. Good work on this. What's next, Ben? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, this group basically created this organization, by the way. Right. I definitely, this completely complete strategy has changed and broadened from just like opening that one center. It's like, okay, we can. Yeah, appreciate so you taking the initiative on it. It's been great. The next item is review of the Grand County CTE scholarship proposal, which we do have some copies of. Um, I saw it. Yeah, I'm good. With it. So, some quick context on this is that in the budget, we set aside 100 grand for workforce development um, for this calendar year. We haven't really dedicated any money to that yet um, or defined any programs. Um, and so, in trying to start those conversations. Um, we talked with the high school CTE department and kind of asked us to pitch us, you know, if, if we had 20 grand to dedicate to a program like this, that's looking at trying to incentivize their kind of workforce placement internship program in the high school, what would that look like? How could that be structured? Um, and this is what they came up with. One thing that was like sort of, or, or sorry, are we are we at time where we're discussing now? Or? Discuss away. One thing that was unclear to me is this seems like great, seems awesome. I mean, seems like my my question is sort of like, is the cost the right number? I mean, do we pay? Is that in terms of like, um, 
is the is their goal of their program to incentivize more seniors to do this than would otherwise do it? And so they're going to offer them two hundred fifty dollars if they complete the it. Point. That's right? very much the goal. And the other part of it is that some uh, hosts pay their interns a certain amount, and others are unable to. And so this would be an opportunity to. And they also notice a difference between those that are paid and the engagement of those students, um, and basically increasing the opportunities for paid placements. Um, and so you'd get, my understanding is it's per, per semester that you participate as a senior. Um, and so this 2022 senior, they, they were really hoping in a perfect world that they'd be able to do kind of a send off and a thank you to their graduating seniors. Um, I think that that's probably out the window at this point. Um, and given that we have 2022 budget, you know, looking at what we would do this fall and then we can plan to budget this in for next year and make sure that that ends up in a budget request. Um, other things that we've been thinking about and um, you know, we can have a longer conversation about, maybe not today, but we've talked about supporting um, recruitment efforts for the, the state's rural online initiative to try to get more people to be literate and able to plug into the remote workforce who already live here um, and a couple other things. Um, that could be good good fits for that kind of those kind of dollars. Obviously, this is kind of why we're doing this plan is so that we can try to have some some bigger um, implementation goals for this hundred grand or changing that budget amount. But um, um, I think the first question is generally, does this fit? Is this a good idea? And then secondarily, should we try to implement this this fall? How much money should we dedicate it to it? Do we need to consider the kind of the scope of options before we kind of say yes to this one thing. Um, those would be my three yeah, kind of discussion yeah. questions that I pose. I, I, so the, I think it's a great program. Let me raise some concerns that I think can be potentially addressed through data. If the goal of this money is to increase economic diversification locally, I'd like to know what percentage of students who participate in this program and would receive these fundings go on to continue their um, careers in Grand County versus leaving Grand County. I'd like to know what percentage of those or, or well, what percentage of those students represent potentially underserved communities or even just to see a broad breakdown of um, community demographics by participating students. Specifically, are the people receiving these funds most likely to be young adults who would not otherwise have competitive opportunity to go to college outside of our area and lead their careers outside of our area? Maybe they're young entrepreneurs, maybe they're people who are first generation, who knows? Um, I think if we're giving $20,000 to a program that supports students who already tend to be privileged in terms of their opportunities and they don't directly support our economy, I would just... I don't, that's I just, probably not the case in yeah. Grand County. I don't know if that's the yeah. case. That's what I'm saying. I don't, oh, I don't know what the point. case is. I just would be curious yeah. to know. And I think also it would be a good, good just um, for yeah, future reporting you. and communicating. Yeah. 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 I was curious to know in the past, it, is there like, are there people, kids who are not completing their trimesters? Is that part of the thing? I mean, do they need to incentivize completion or is it that they want just more students to do it? And then I was also curious as to what all businesses and organizations were participating. Yeah, so I think it's um, an engagement and recruitment um, focus. And I think the other conversation that we had, I mean, this came from Ben and I tabling at career week at the high school and asking students what they saw in as their future in Grand County um, in general, and just getting a lot of pessimism I mean, that's not a surprise they're in high school, but like um, trying to, I think, see that a lot of students who are graduating from high school either um, are not seeing an opportunity for them that they're excited about in this community um, or that, um, you know, maybe they plan to plan to leave and might want to come back, but they're not sure. And so a lot of the conversations with the CTE folks was like, this is an opportunity to kind of show to students the, the, the opportunities we do have. Because I think there are a lot of things that kids don't realize, you know, whether it's, you know, public land management, science research, or working in government, or, you know, uh, doing Ooh. law, all of these kinds of things that are opportunities that exist here, um, and kind of doing a better one-to-one -one match. 
um, and saying, you know, what would you be interested in? And let's try to connect you to that, that person um, or that job or that industry. When, when I said I'd inspirational tool to connect the, the kids to the workforce and opportunity. Or maybe to even involve more of the workforce and the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, um, when I said like I liked it earlier, I meant like I liked the general, like the really, really general idea. Uh -huh. I, to me, this document is does not tell me enough information um, about why, like, for instance, is, is, you know, there's about 100 seniors, right? You know, what is the, how much does this make sense for? Does it make sense that all of them go to it? Currently, is there an issue? Do they not want to sign up for it? Is, is enrollment currently 20? Is it 10? Like, what's current enrollment? Um, also, like, I don't know why they're separating this out in two years. I also don't love that it's just like a, a fixed amount for every student. If you're yeah. talking about like explaining what the workforce is like, like if you're giving everybody the same amount of money, like a participation award trophy is like what you get when you're five years old, you know, when you play sports, you know, like I so. real world should be much more like, you know, show that you care about this, show that you want to do certain things, give people an opportunity to distinguish themselves and give those people a larger award. Um, yeah, I think opportunities to, to, for, you know, we have a hundred kids. I'm sure a lot of them end up leaving and that could help our workforce, you know, and educating them about the different opportunities that exist and incentivizing them to pay attention and consider that with money makes a ton of sense. Um, I, I just feel like, I, I guess I don't know if there's a final proposal or whatnot. I could certainly do a placeholder and say like, I'm in favor of, you know, allocating money towards something like this, but I feel like I'd want to, um, yeah, just see kind of like a, you know, a more yeah. detailed proposal about like how, what, what is like, what is the, pro tell me the problem to say the problem. Like I wrote my last thing, I, I kind of was simple, the problem and then the solution, like what is, what's the issue and then what are you going to do about it? I mean, and I don't want to cut the legs out of this and I realize this is one of few proposals that have come for us. But if we had the opportunity to support a senior who wanted to start a business and needed $10,000 investment, would we put our money there or would we put it towards the students who are, you know, may, yeah. may or may not be, and I don't have the answer to that, by the way, I don't say that in an opinionated way, but I would love to think about impact and where that, because I mean, we're just looking at a $65,000 budget, you know, this is a third of the budget that we're putting towards an economic strategic plan. Is this where the money can have the most impact? I don't know, but yeah, I yeah, I agree. I think we should definitely, the other thing too, it's like, this is the high school, right? This is, they have money, you know, and they can make these, this course requirement if they want to, mm -hmm. to graduation. Mm -hmm. So like, is this, I, what Emily said off the top of her head is like a way better idea to me yeah. already, you know, like, well, and, and I, I should clarify on that point that one thing that we haven't really developed is an entrepreneurial um, support program and development. You know, the grant programs that we're creating are for established businesses that we're hoping to expand. And as we've talked with Megan at the SBDC, doing that kind of like entrepreneurial cohort business plan development seed funding, that's a separate initiative that I think we plan to develop. Um, and that this is much more about workforce development and 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 obviously kelly that's like your job so uh i'd love to hear your thoughts on that and if this is superfluous to the to the like the real core deliverables that you work on um i think the main part of it is that we are trying to explore partnering with the high school cte program as a part of that you know workforce development strategy and and um, continuum and what exactly the program is and how much money goes to it is very much still up in the air, but this is just kind of a, an opportunity to start a conversation, I think. Do you want me to weigh in now or do you want me to weigh in down the road? Go for it, Kelly. So, um, maybe what we, and again, I'm not very articulate today for some reason, but <laughs> maybe, maybe what we want to take a look at is those students amongst these students who are working in businesses who have an employee need who continue at least through the summer working for that individual employer to help ease that need. Maybe there's an incentive there. Um, or, I mean, interns, this type of intern, and I used to coordinate this program 20 years ago, but those types of interns are really by definition not supposed to be a benefit to the employer. It's supposed to be more of a benefit to the to the student 
Right. If they're getting paid, they're more like a an employee relationship, and that's a little bit different. But maybe the incentive is something like this person goes on to to study the in that field that the employer needs staffing in or does a summer job for that employer to help ease the need something something like that maybe that's a little bit better way of going about it we have some funding that can support this type of um, internship but it's sort of limited to it's it's pretty limited um, so we could partner with the CTE program probably more closely and pick up a couple of these students to give them some incentives. But I, I think it's it's a great idea. And and Rob, I don't think the school does have a lot of money. They do have some influence if they want to try to make this a requirement, but I don't think they have a lot of money to incent this. But as this group is trying to you know, work on specific economic development goals, I think it probably does make sense to gear it more toward how how the internship itself impacts the needs in the community for workers i mean we're all proud of them we're glad they're working all of those kinds of things but this group is talking about how do we help support employers who have specific labor needs now and in the future so maybe we need to come up with something a little closer to that well, what about supporting the workers who sign up? I mean, you know, the employers who are signing up for these programs and making incentive for them to take on the internships. I like that better. Yeah. The, more, in the past, yeah. in general, I don't think, I don't, I'm guessing there's not a huge deficit of employers who are willing to do this program because they, they are getting a benefit from it. I'm not opposed necessarily to, to giving them an incentive, but I'm not sure that it's, I'd rather see the incentive go to one of the students who continues to work through the summer or takes a job in the community that that then is helping the whole community and that individual employer. That's my personal feeling about it. I mean, if we if we find out differently, then it might be a great idea to, in, to incentivize employers to take these students on. but. My guess is that they may not need an incentive, to be honest. Yeah, maybe just to be yeah. cold. Uh, and then a small thing that incorporates uh, a few suggestions that people have made earlier would be that you know maybe two fifty is too small, maybe it's a little higher, but maybe then you pay them after six months or a year of being in the workforce in Grant County or something after graduation. Maybe it's you know incentivizing that. Um, I think we, I think to me though, like the closer I look at this, it seems a little uninspired um, of, as a proposal, and that I would sort of challenge them to think harder about how to, you know, what impact they can make, and be more creative with different things. I love like we just we just came up with a bunch of them right yeah. off the top of our heads. If I could just add something on that, I, not that this is what you were hinting at, but I just want to also cut down some slack because when we met with them, we kind of gave them a, a feeling, I think, perhaps you know, naively, that we would be able to turn something around pretty quickly. So they threw this together very quickly because they thought that we might be able to turn these $20,000 around very quickly for their students. I can't remember why we thought that, but it didn't happen. Um, they have the next two months off. We could take it upon ourselves to come up with strategies to suggest to them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, come fall. And, you know, that could that we would that could be mutually beneficial right. yeah mm -hmm. and then have them go back and, and see what, what works for them but i think that all these ideas are things we should absolutely post to them and i think we're going to be in favor of it for the most part yeah so i think um where i what i'm thinking here is that you know having some kind of uh workshop conversation about this workforce development priority in general and um maybe convening rather than having it so board focused having kind of like what we do with child care where we bring all those stakeholders into the room, um, whether it's, you know, Jordan Leonard, who runs the USU um, Rural Online Initiative Program for our area, and have the folks from CTE, and have Kelly, and um, anybody else who would be involved in that kind of hash out. And maybe, we, you know, we can bring in a consultant who works on, in economic development departments and does workforce development programs. Um, and we just sit down outside of a board meeting context and kind of start hashing out. Um, yeah. Let's just we had this money. What would we do this year? How should we 
you know, because that's going to plug into the planning process, but we want to keep this the ball rolling. Um, Kelly, um, not for today, but if you have this information, I'd love to share you to share it. I'm really curious to know, based off what you're seeing, what are the biggest impediments to getting people into jobs? Is it relocation fees? Is it gas and cost of transportation? Is it specific upskilling needs? I realize there's needs that vary depending on skill level and type of job. Um, but I realize that's a gap in my knowledge of understanding what could be the most effective ways of potentially injecting some funds into the economy to help with that specific problem. So I realize that's a very big walk of a question, but I'm hoping you might have some trend data or the ability to summarize it, you know, at some point, or maybe you and I could just jump on a call, but I'd, I'd love to know that. Yeah, I'm not sure that I'll be able to get numbers specifically. I have some anecdotal stuff that I can share, but, and I, and I think it's multifaceted. Honestly. I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. And we all know housing is a big part. So or maybe, but maybe the, the graduating seniors are the best people because they're living with mom and dad still. still. <laughs> they got housing. Um, and yeah, getting some data on what maybe what, from the high school, what happens to those seniors? I've been curious about that myself. Like how, how many, many of them, how many kids are actually staying in Grand County? Because there's really not a lot. Incentivizing that would be, would be, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, that's really interesting. I don't know how, like, I honestly don't know, like, the legal boundaries of that, but is there a scholarship that exists not for kids who go to college, but for kids who stay and work in a county for 12 months to be able to then, you know, reward their investment with money that could be used for a scholarship for skill development and for housing going forward? You know, maybe there's something to that. To that. And what kind of, like, trade, um, what kind of trades are available for mm -hmm. people to learn outside of just college? Lots. I mean, mm -hmm. you make good money watching kids. You don't, you don't need to be that old to right. run a child care center. Um, right. Yeah. Can you fix a heater? Can you fix an air conditioner? Mm -hmm. Can you know? Um, right. one, of the, yeah. one of the things we've talked about in this group before is apprenticeship. And that's something that I think is an opportunity that, opportunity that we can um, mm -hmm. explore with this. Got welders in town now. We've got a lot of small businesses. So yeah, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, Thank I think you, we should. Kelly. I think we should probably maybe as a group, maybe another time, decide like what, you know, what what goal what goal will we have? Like what problem are we want to solve for or something like that? It just seems like pretty unfocused. Yeah. And I would also maybe just like pose another thing for for you, Kelly. We don't have to talk about now at all, but I feel like you know you you know you have a lot of programs and and, and you're uh, you're part of a large organization from the state. And I have to imagine that there are times in your day where you think like, man, I wish there wasn't, I wish I could just give money to this or to do that. And that would make an impact. There's no program for that. Um, Cause maybe, you know, you're like one of the best people to just think of creatively. How can we, cause this money is less restricted than, you know, your big organization you work for. Yeah, I have a couple of thoughts and I'll give it some more thought. I think that's a good idea. Because you're right, yeah. our our funding is often very restrictive, and it's really helpful to have things that are, are not that can help individuals or in groups. So yeah, I'll give it some thought. Um, with that, I think that we can move on from this topic. I'm glad that we got a good opportunity to, to explore this and chat about it. Um, it is one minute until five o'clock. Um. So I know the last thing on this, on this agenda today was to talk about um, the money that we've been um, talking about putting towards ADU and deed restriction programs. Um, Lisa, maybe if you had five minutes to give us like a quick update on the, where that's at and where the planning and zoning department could potentially use some of that money. Yep, for sure. So uh, August and Ben approached us with the idea of coming in on our housing study that we're doing to update the 2018 Nexus study. And um, they specifically wanted to look at um, adding into the scope of work, the feasibility analysis for their two um, incentive programs for constructing ADUs, increasing the construction of ADUs, and then purchasing deed restrictions. And that's where this all started. Um, and then we, uh, at planning and zoning and after kind of John uh, making the transition to me and I'm kind of looking at the 
of our budget, it was already kind of apparent that we didn't have much funding for this study, but now it's becoming a little more <laughs> in terms of planning and zoning's own budget. We don't have, we might not have much to, to actually put towards this, um, the study that we originally were going after. Um, so now um, it's even, it's looking more and more like we might be dependent upon economic development grant funding for um, the, the larger part of the study for this, for the scope of work that involves um, having the uh, consultant um, look at two, a two prong approach to our land use code updates and to attack the housing uh, problem. Um, so one of them is we would, one initiative that we have been discussing is to um, provide, uh, well, basically re require um, new development, including subdivisions to um, essentially put, pitch in to deed restricted units, like either for a subdivision, it would be pretty simple, like set aside some of those lots for as deed restricted for local housing um, or pay a fee in lieu. So that would be one, one approach. So it's kind of like inclusionary zoning policy. Is that like, would that ever fly though or be legal? It's it legal like, right now. Okay, but... that seems like the kind of thing that yeah, yeah, it's but, basically what Moab City did with their R three and R four zones, but has it hasn't kind of completely gotten through the process, um, from what I understand. But we would be kind of looking at that same idea, but it would be more for it's it's based on Summit counties and a lot of other areas that have inclusionary zoning for affordable housing. But instead of doing it for affordable, um, mar, mar, moderate income housing, it would be geared towards just deed restricted housing units, if that makes sense. Yeah, maybe maybe you make it vague enough, vague, it, it's vague enough in terms of the negative impact on the property, the property owner, they might not fight it as much. Because ultimately to me, it seems like this whole this whole request for proposal seems a lot like the other one where it's like, if in terms of that, you know, if the goal is like, you know, we need to create a framework to use this money creatively for the next three to five years. We need the state to kind of be for it. Mm -hmm. Then, like, then it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But then this would be like a piece that almost it would be like a sort of like a UTV trigger point where it's like, wait a minute, what are you producing value of, of property for property right. owners? Right, right, right. Like, not cool. No, I know. It's, and that's the HCHO already. I mean, it's not that different, I think, in terms of. I think that it, there's a perception out there, that, and I think it can get misconstrued and um, people will, will jump to conclusions about it like they did with the when the city came forward with their proposal but um, we would have to be very careful in making sure that that it's very clear that it's this is only to um, increase the pool of deed restricted units and um, and and we would you know we would try to keep it within reason and, and not impact developers so that it, it wouldn't really hurt their bottom line as you know per se yeah maybe. um well, sorry i interrupted you but that's what the study minutes, so. that's what the study would look at you know yeah. it would give us that information so then the second approach would be to um increase okay. our ability to incentivize affordable housing units which that's how legally you need to, to work and operate um in order to get affordable housing we have to incentivize it legally in utah now so the, so the, the approach for that would be looking, we currently in our land use code offer bonus incentives through a PUD, like a planned unit development, um, but developers do not opt into that. The, historically, we've never had anybody um, utilize that um, bonus incentive. So we would like to have the, the study kind of look at why maybe there's, a, there's something we can do to improve that bonus incentive that's already in our code. And then the other thing is, is use our future land use map that we're going to be adopting soon, um, which identifies areas for higher density and also areas where uh, it could be um, slated for or envisioned for um, like a, not exclusively residential anymore, but a future land use designation that would be like an up zone to neighborhood commercial mixed use. That is something we're going to be kind of trying to decide where that should go in the county in the future. So the future land use map could be a tool 
to incentivize, like if, if somebody came to a re, to, with a rezone request for um, a higher density uh, residential zoning or neighborhood commercial, it would be considered an up zone if we were to approve that, but the county would in return um, ask for affordable housing units in their future development or a fee in lieu. I feel like we have so much supply coming online with the single family homes in the secondary market, which is amazing. But that first one, I don't know if that's where the need is to assess right now, since we already have tools. How do we get more rental units? What's mm -hmm. preventing people from building these units? Where can we look at our land use code and get creative around manufactured housing? And I, I continue to think that we are missing an opportunity by not looking creatively at mobile dwellings. So oh, yeah, I would I agree really that. like us to focus Absolutely. there. Yeah. The people who are not being served are our renters, our first time home buyers, not the people, you know, and particularly people who are outside of the middle and up where it cut that. Right. And um, right. So, the, and, yeah. The, and that's what I think the study would actually accomplish is looking at multiple solutions mm -hmm. and including what you're saying. Because we do have in the in the scope, we included um, economic developments programs that they want to have funded through their grant, um, which is the increasing aid, incentivizing ADU construction, and then the purchasing of deed restrictions. Yeah. Um, so hope this, sorry. Do you, no, go for it. Go I was just going to say, um, I'll apologize. I hope it doesn't come off like I don't. I don't do this every day, mm -hmm. right? But I do have a perspective, so I'm going to offer a perspective. Okay. But I hope. Um, to me, this this feels um, like again so many steps, uh, and there I think like Emily's question. I feel like I could give a presentation right now on, on about ADUs and why they're not getting built, and I have like, almost no background. Right. I'm sure there's right. someone better than me that could do it, but we don't need to like find someone right about this. Like, you know, like sure. for, for, we need to waive fees, you know, for them to like, you know, you know, not all the different like uh, the building permits you need are the same cost if right. you build a hundred fifty thousand dollar thing if you build a five hundred thousand dollar thing. It's like all this stuff that like is sort of obvious to do yeah. and i get that you're short i'm sure you're short staff so i like the idea of like using some outsourced thing to like help you get the obvious things done well that, like, and, and let me just interject because the identified. original reason for this study is actually to provide the legal justification for um requiring new development for the other things not the adu like what you're talking about with the research on how to incentivize adus or increase the construction of adus yeah, that could be pretty simple. That might not be like the the most important part of the study. Yeah. But we, you know, that was but something that was brought forward. But why is but they land. did this study for us five years ago. Why right. That and that's study? not relevant anymore because, okay, here, I'm just going to read it. Okay. Um, the 2018 Nexus study uh, re resulted in our current assured housing policy se uh, section 6.15 produced a requirement to provide affordable, uh, moderate income rate housing, which we can no longer require without an incentive. Therefore, the updated study would provide the legal justification for requiring workforce or local housing deed restricted units, as opposed to affordable housing. So we can no longer we go that route it, legally. Unless we're gonna pay them to do it. Right? So, so, and this has been, this has been something that the commission and the attorney and the county administrator all kind of been talking about wanting to pursue. Um, and then the second thing is that the, the Nexus study in 2018 produced the housing Nexus and corresponding linkage fees only for hotel developments in luxury single family homes. So those are the only types of developments that we would ever be able to get any kind of affordable or deed restricted units out of to assess a linkage fee or a whatever. And we haven't been able to do that at all because we don't have any hotel developments coming through our office. Um, we don't have, and the luxury single family homes that just never worked out. So we, so all that work for that study, and we have this new assured housing section in our code, and it's not doing anything for affordable housing or local deed restricted housing. So the idea is we, so in order to, um, to provide the new legal justification, we have to have the study to kind of back up the, the actual reason and rationale behind the nexus. It provides the nexus between what new development is creating the need for housing, right? 
just so everything's so formal. It's like, why? It's like, we're on a, we're on a ball fire. Because we can get ultimately. sued. Because it's a, ask the attorney. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, yeah. it's coming straight from the attorney. So one thing I'd love to build into this as we're looking at funding and needs is a survey of existing code across the county, across the country and communities like ours. What are other people doing? Your office is so busy and you do a fantastic job. Well, we've, and we have done that. We've looked into it. We have, <laughs> we have model codes. We have model inclusionary zoning. And so we feel like we have a sufficient we survey. Do. We just need the justification to implement this. Right. Okay. We, and we have to have somebody to actually come in and, and basically do what they did in 2018, what BAE or Urban Economics did, but to expand the scope of it beyond just looking at hotel development and luxury single family homes as being the cause or the, the kind of development that we would assess that kind of a fee or. Have you all seen the phase one and phase two reports from that from 2018? Can we send that around? Yeah, did I? Barry. Yeah, I, I keep thinking it, I would send it to you, but maybe I, I can send it to yeah, the rest let's of send you. It to the yeah, because the sure. data in there will make you want to throw heavy objects at glass. Like it yeah. just is so upsetting. And I'm sure I've seen yeah. it at some point because I also serve yeah. on the housing task force. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's been a long time. It was something yeah. like a household right, where a guy is employed as a firefighter and a you know wife is employed as a teacher couldn't afford. 98% of the houses that have been sold in Grant County in the last 18 months. Like yeah. it was just. Well, and look at them now. Yeah. It's beyond really, that. For that. Uh, it's beyond, way beyond that. University of Utah put out their updates today for housing. 25% of housing units in unincorporated Grant County are single uh, or uh, overnight rentals. Mm. 25%. It's yeah. absurd. No. Sorry, I'm it's insane. It's, I'm, <laughs> this is, this is, yes. Thank it doesn't you include for the clarification. Spot. So it doesn't include hotels, it doesn't include second homes. Forty seventy five percent, yeah. I will I will try and just bring back the last bit of context with this discussion is that by this time next month, we need to have spent these funds. Right, Not sure. just know how we're spending them, we need to have spent them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the path forward for continuing this conversation because it's extremely valuable, but we have this personal time constraint. Sure. Okay. On, on that. Mm -hmm. What, what happened to the discussions with Housing Authority and the Land Trust? We are still working on that. Here, the way that I see it is that. Can I just, we, can I just step in really quick? Sure. I was just going to say that I think that's what has led to this conversation. As we, we have spoken with the Land Trust, we've spoken with Hasu, and we've spoken with Planning and Zoning <clears throat> and saying, you know, these are our priorities. This is the budget we have. Is it. Should we just give this to Hasu and let you run? Should we do some research? Blah, 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 blah. And um, I think that um, those conversations that separately are looking at exploring, uh, you know, can we do some kind of a simple veil and deed type of, of program for our area or an ADU thing? And Hasu said, we'd take your money and you do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Um, and I think that this. Kind of element of it would be i think what i want to make sure is the first pass to make sure that our kind of internal development strategy with p and z is sound um, and then if there's additional funds we could move on those um, other priorities and those are being scoped out per my understanding um, that is, is what, is what you're saying that is what you're saying that that kaylin and ben were like what we really need is we need to like create a document, pay someone a bunch of money to make a report that that talks about definitions being different, so we can move forward with our objectives. Is that what they were in favor of versus actually implementing a program now? Go ahead. Yes or no? I mean, was Caitlin like do this? Is that what she wants? Is this what Ben wants? Or in, in those conversations, I think it's th this is one avenue potentially. Um, for that funding. I think they, 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 um, okay. they thought that that money could probably be used for legal stuff, most importantly, and kind of creating, you know, the framework for executing this rather than launching a program in, the brand, um, in general, generally speaking. And I think also to Ben's point of having the, it needed to be spent by the end of July. The real constraint is we need to have a report done um by the end of, of September or excuse me by the end of August um and that allows us to apply for the next round of funding 
Our, our frustration is with the way that the legislature has bound our hands. Like I, I have seen these proposals come before the county commission and the county commission doesn't have the authority to say, we will only allow this if you yeah. do why. Like call your Senator and. Well, I also think it's, wait, 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 probably, but this will help with that, but this will help with that. This will allow us to give legal justification for things that we need to do to put handing, housing in the hands of the people who need it most. So but you're in favor of this? I am in favor of our approach to this. I'm frustrated the need exists, but that's not always yeah. simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. The need exists. Yeah. We yes. can't do anything yes. about right. it. So do we do it? That way we can move forward with these types of proposals coming across the commission's desk. I, I will say the data that came out of the last round of this, and it is such a disappointment that we weren't able to do more with it, but the data that came out was a rallying cry. It's why we have HDHO. It's why we have assured housing. It's why we, quite frankly, I think it's one of the reasons we were able to have a moratorium and short-term rental and overnight rentals and do what we did because the data that came out of that study was gross and i do think that this is going to have impact beyond just giving us the legal and that study will be it's it's in here i think it, it, i say it a few times that that study the 2018 study will be a foundation that, that this study will build upon like use that data that's useful data yeah but we need to expand the scope of and make the make all that justification actually create an, I can get something that's going to work. Yeah. Can I ask how close this is with Christina? Has she seen this? Yes. How close is it? I think it's basically there. I think okay. I just but let them know that we were going to discuss right. with you guys this afternoon and get your blessing yeah. to use the grant money. And, and, and I, I'm still trying to find out from Chris whether or not we have any money in our budget to contribute to it. So um, just buy the whole thing. I, I, we, we have to spend these funds and this has to happen for the sake of the county at some point. It could be today or tomorrow. Right. So I would like to keep to keep trying because we are on this time crunch and I'm trying to get this RFP to the county commission for approval. Um, we were hoping to get it on the agenda deadline at the agenda deadline for today. I just found out though a couple hours ago that they're they might they're, move it to Friday, so we yeah. might have a few more days this yeah. week to get it. In. They're not doing the July fifth meeting; they're postponing it in special meeting on Friday. So, so there's still a chance we could get this approved at their next meeting and yeah. and then go forward. And I'm not a voting member, but I'm yeah. Yes. Rob pressures on. Rob and Rob Kelly. 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 <laughs> what is the, what is the proposed what 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 motion does does someone want? <laughs> recommend that this go before the county commission for approval as soon as possible to use the grant well yeah but specifically but specifically that it, it sounds like most or all of the funding would come from our rural county grant because and it was it would be that yeah, amount that yeah. you guys had said uh originally was sixty three thousand of the rural grant funding well yeah for... that was just the number we floated we okay. have we have over a hundred thousand set more, aside for workforce part, housing. Half support. of it was going to maybe go to an actual pilot program mm -hmm. for ADUs and ADUs, but we, but I don't know. We also haven't settled on a number for that either. Right, right. This all just has to go towards workforce housing support, and this body alone decides what that means. Well, and it was interesting to me that you included, you know, the the extra stuff for for finding out how you know feasible, like incentivizing right. the ADU. We're putting. Was. Right, we would it, like to have restrictions. Like, mm -hmm. is it going to be worth just our like, time and it to, doesn't have to, to be a huge part of the study, but for that to be kind of like a supplementary um, analysis. Well, and I think that how could, that would support. that could help support our our future recommendations to the council for the commission for some of these incentives for the ADUs or other things that we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think. And and the last thing I'll say, <clears throat> just something I like to remind myself when I'm thinking about wanting to put money towards things that we can get done in September, we'll be able to apply to the same program that we're talking about right now. So by the end of the year, we'll probably have another two hundred thousand dollars. Yes, that again nice to be able to show. is is completely up to this body. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I think I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I, I do get that. I get that. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm coming off. Uh, I mean, I feel like, you know, childcare, we're doing it. It's like happening. And I could use more money. Like we could do more with more money. Like for well, sure. Here's, here's a scenario. We have a subdivision come a subdivision subdivision application come forward to county commission and say, let's say it's uh, you know, 45 units. We can't do anything about we have to approve it just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Um, because it, most likely there, you know, there are definitely areas that are already entitled to that kind of density. 
and there's lots of land out in Spanish Valley and um, in the county. And if we had something in place where we could say, okay, well, um, you know, according to our assured housing section, new subdivisions can only be approved. We can only approve this, but you have to, uh, as a developer, set aside a certain amount of units for deed as deed restricted for locals. We would be able to do that as a result of this study being complete. Otherwise, we just keep going on. Like, is, is that is that true? Other people. Yes, that's true. Well, okay. it's like more powerful than asking uh, yeah, I, someone to buy this deed restriction. Because you're telling, well, great, yeah, you can do your development. This, this is how I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, if it actually something will happen, as I'm just trying to think, okay, what's the outcome of this? I know and, it's a long ways to get to that. Well, it, it sounds like <laughs> maybe it's not. It sounds like it's not a long ways, right? It's like do this study, change the wording, and then you can point and to that, can, and then the state, code and then the state won't challenge it or can't challenge it as easily. I think this is right? much more immediately actionable than say, like, what we're talking about the strategic plan. You know, if you're thinking just in terms of time to see the results from this, yeah, right. That's at least that's the understanding. You because those right. applications can come across your desk at any time, and we're just yep. kind of in the longer we wait. And it's, right? not like, and again, you, it's not like we don't know that the, Let, the let's basis this, is there. Let's give another example. We did this in 2018. If we had done this in 2017 and put our shared, shared housing into place, the Radisson Hotel, the Wingate, the the hotel out, you know, north of the my place, your the, my place. <laughs> The, um, I don't know about Lions Back, but there were Ugh. multiple hotel developments where we would have been able to require assured housing or fee and lieu really? that we now cannot do because we got it into wow. it. We yeah. didn't anticipate that, but here's yes. an opportunity where not acting just, you know. Gosh, I feel like I feel so unprepared on this, on this yeah. board in terms of like, so you guys all have this background. I don't have this background. <laughs> so to me, I'm just like, this is it's like, really? Lot. Like, can't you just do something it's and then if they sue you, you kind of like, <laughs> like it's no. <laughs> so I mean, okay, look, if everyone's in for it for it, I mean hope they don't ask me to explain why I like it. <laughs> Have them call us. I mean, like, why did you support this? Well, um, aren't, aren't the non-voting members like able to pair up with a voting member to have them? Yeah. Wasn't that part of the bylaw? No, it's fine. I mean, like at this point, we're just trying to like and, and again, yeah. ultimately, you know, we need to have this this board function and this money be spent and have something to point to it. And so Look, okay, look, I just wanted to push back a little bit. Yeah, no, I get it. Hopefully that wasn't a little bit. No, no, no. <laughs> this counts as a little bit, hopefully. Yeah, okay, I recommend that we, um, oh, is it, the motion is what, that, we're, that we put this in. Someone say it, so I can say so moved. Do you want to the Grand Canyon request a proposal RFP relating to professional planning services for local housing and affordable housing nexus study and linkage fee analysis? That we approve it. That you that recommend, 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 the, the, I recommend we recommend yeah. specifically the that grant that Grand that. County's Grand okay. County commission Owens. consider that uh, consider this for their the recommend that for, the funds come from the economic development. Mm -hmm. You got that already well. <laughs> from the grant Something. money. Are you <laughs> from the <laughs> rural, are you rural County Grant Part A <laughs> funds set aside for workforce housing? She's with us. It's all recorded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So moved, uh, Kelly. Second. How, how you, how second. <laughs> second. <laughs> I. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Uh, Aye. Great. Okay. You know, Kelly, uh, on, this, on this board, you get paid by the word. You're <laughs> 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 missing out. <laughs> I've been in this conversation before. Yeah. Right, y'all. Well, we've come to the end of our agenda. Um, so uh, I adjourn this meeting. Thank you all. This has been great. And I'll see y'all back in Moab. Safe travels. Thank you. Safe travels. travels. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, back tomorrow, I think. Right? I doubt they're there, but if, if they are, we should talk to them real quick. Give you a whole nope. history of yeah. the last oh, okay. decade and yeah. all this stuff because it's been a I would like ride. to understand more. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I, I'm usually like aware that I'm like missing something when I feel like, well, can the solution just be this simple? I'm, I'm always thinking like everyone's like, no, it's not that's it should be, but it's not. Generally, um, everybody's ran right away, huh? went to go and Sorry, scream Rachel. into the void because that's all what I'm ready to do. I don't know, like it's like it's, I mean, just do stuff you want to do and then you don't care. You know what I mean? I mean it's like the reality is small. Well, I guess it's a job for you though, so that's a little bit different. We have when just to give you an example, when the county removed overnight rentals as a use of their right, the response from the community was that
by talking to them directly. Um, I will, I already started an email to Chris and Christina just to say, you know, again, like we have this timeline crunch and now that the commission 